So the final document I want to talk about is uh, my element condition document. This is going to help you stop making conditions between individual elements and their associated conditions. So once you become fluent with this, your view of clinical findings appointment is going to be really, really good. So if you remember back to that very first um, session I did when I talked about suggested elements, right? I talked about glucose and talked about BUN and what conditions they are associated with. So this is where we become really conversant with considering what conditions are associated with increased or decreased optimal levels of a particular element. So this is available to download or a link directly underneath of this video where you can go download this. So there are very, few, I'm just going to read the top of this, there are very few diagnostic tests that are truly diagnostic all on their own. It's really important to see the trends and patterns that exist between various tests. So this guide is organized to provide the information by listing the individual components of blood chemistry screens and complete blood counts, and then looking at what conditions are associated with these. So I'm just going to kind of go through a couple of pages of this and, and point out some sort of important pieces here. When glucose is elevated, we now need to start thinking about blood sugar dysregulation, and blood sugar dysregulation happens on a spectrum. We have metabolic syndrome here is probably the most uh, important one. Um, early stage of hyperglycemia is very tied in here with metabolic syndrome. We also have to consider insulin resistance and that type of thing, hyperinsulinemia as well. It can also be a sign of thiamine need. It can also be a sign of fatty liver and liver congestion and also cortisol resistance. Low levels are associated with reactive hyperglycemia. Liver glycogen issues, adrenal hypofunction can cause glucose levels to be decreased. Hemoglobin A1C very much associated with diabetes and insulin resistance, and then when it's low, it's associated with hypoglycemia. High triglycerides, very obviously affected by many different conditions, or many different conditions will have an increased triglyceride level. Metabolic syndrome, fatty liver, liver congestion, insulin resistance, cardiovascular disease, atherosclerosis, poor metabolism and utilization of fats, early stage diabetes, hyperlipidemia, hyperlipoproteinemia, primary hypothyroidism. That's an interesting one. Any type of hypothyroidism, actually, I would consider that the triglyceride level starts to rise. When you, you sort of take your foot off the accelerator, because really the thyroid is like the accelerator in a car. It governs metabolism in the body, how much metabolic energy is produced. So when you, you decrease the amount of metabolic energy, then we have a difficult time working through our blood fats, cholesterol and triglycerides specifically. Low triglycerides are seen with liver biliary dysfunction, a condition that I consider as a hallmark sign for autoimmune processes. It's one of those red light bulb things that goes off in my head when I see low triglycerides. Obviously, there's other elements involved with that too, and adrenal hyperfunction. Cholesterol, a lot of the same. Um, remember also uh, liver biliary dysfunction. I remember with low cholesterol, uh, that actually, this LDL should be over here. It was my bad. So put a great big line from here uh, to here. Uh, my bad there. Um, hopefully I'll adjust that by the time that uh, you get to download this. So I'll, I'll move that across and re-upload this. Uh, high HDL is associated with an autoimmune process, as is a low cholesterol and a low triglyceride. Here's the BUN stuff that we went through. Remember high BUN, renal disease, renal insufficiency, dehydration, hypochlorhydria, a diet that has excessive protein intake, adrenal hyperfunction, dysbiosis, anterior pituitary dysfunction. And then a low BUN is associated with uh, diets that are low in protein, malabsorption, pancreatic insufficiency, liver dysfunction, and that type of thing. So I don't really, you know, you don't necessarily need me to, to go through this with you. And so what are the things that I would, you know, almost test yourself on? Make some flashcards if you really want to learn this stuff. You know, what is a high potassium associated with adrenal hyperfunction, dehydration, tissue destruction, metabolic acidosis? And so when you're sitting down um, 
with the uh, patient and you start looking at this and you've got your up and down arrows, if you're using the software you're seeing it's going to show you whether something's elevated or decreased above or below the optimum range. You can start putting these, uh, these together in terms of, of creating patterns.